Hey guys, welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, everybody. And tonight we'll be reviewing... Um, it's, a, it's a franchise yes. of three movies. Yeah, a franchise yeah. of three movies that goes on to make a TV series after that. But I won't go to, into too much detail. Not the moment, no. No. It's called The Librarian. Yeah. For those of you who are into the uh, electronic age, a librarian takes care of books. <laughs> yeah, he's not a librarian, <laughs> just so you know. Not a librarian, no, it's a librarian. Yeah, paper and cardboard and, th- you know, I'm joking, guys. <laughs> I know you guys all know what a book is, but some sometimes you start feeling that for all these e-books and everything else and people doing everything online... Um, people are getting away from real books, and it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. I miss um, the the smell of books. And the feel of a book. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like having, having a tablet in your hand, sitting in front of a t- uh, PC, having a laptop yeah. there, and trying to read an e-book and, and scrolling. And some of you guys just, may or yeah. may not agree with yeah. me, but you may think um, that an e-book is not like the real thing, because no doubt your e-book will... Sh- Either shut off or uh, or blackout, or you or you have well, to end up replacing it. If you it. download an ebook and you get a computer crash mm. and your C drive gets destroyed and everything, you haven't got a book. If your book falls off the shelf onto the floor, you can pick it up, make sure the pages didn't fall out, and put it back on the shelf. You can read it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can still put a bookmark in there, even though these yeah, well, days you can put a bookmark you inside a, um, an electronic books. Electronical yeah, 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 book, but readers, yeah. at least in this case you could do it really quickly instead of just have to scroll down the st- screen with it. Yeah, and it's easy, and you, you can put your earmark, your earmark different pages all over the place, you go, oh, that earmark there, Whack over there. Or, or a piece of paper, you know, book, you know, post-it note, something, and put little tags off it, you're going to have a dozen bookmarks in your book for different things. Okay, okay. I don't know we're if you can do that a, in an e-book. We're getting ahead of ourselves, so <laughs> let's just focus on this current Well, it's about movie. librarians, I think we just... So, <laughs> let's get into this. So anyway. It's about a... Um, well, we only have a few. Uh, can I just tell you that who the main actors are and yeah. stuff before we roll yeah. into telling stories and, mm-hmm. and synopsises and different uh-huh. things? Okay, right. Now, this. Okay, there's three movies, obviously. Now, um, the original movie was written by uh, David Titcher, and he got awards for this, I think, from memory. Uh, now, after that, uh, somebody else took out the writing. Okay, well, mm-hmm. so, but anyway, directed by uh, Peter Winther. And he only did the first movie as well. And the producers are D- Dean Devlin and Electric Entertainment. Now, they, they were involved in the other two movies. Now, the cast. Now, these are re- re- most of these, three of them are recur- recurring cast. The mm. first one, Noah Weil plays Flynn Carson. Mm. He's in the three movies. Okay. Mm. Uh, Sonia Wolga plays Nicole New. It's got no one, in, 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 or, or noon, N-O-O-N-E. I'm not quite sure hint, hint. <laughs> that's supposed to be Nicole No One or Nicole Noon. However, yeah. uh, she's only in this movie. Now, Bob Newhart, all you old buggers out there like me, should know Bob Newhart from his early, early comic days, Bob Newhart's show and other things, and mm. he's been around for a while. Yeah. Bob, uh, now, there's a lady called Jane Curtin. She plays Charlene. Another thing I should mention, Jane Curtin, she was also stars in Third Rock from the Sun. I thought I recognised her from somewhere. Well, mm. it's a little hard to not recognise her. It's not really hard to recognise her because she, her gruffness at, in the her, yeah, this she, character she's work doing is no different from the other yeah, one she's she did. Yeah, she's really, really, uh, mm, scares me. I was just <laughs> watching her just a while ago, watching a rerun of Third Rock, so anyway, to short, get I'm ideas talking, to talk about okay. for now, you guys. The first movie was called The Quest for the Spear. That was the Spear of Destiny. Uh, that's supposed to be the spear that killed Jesus. Yeah, you know, Sab- Jesus. Sab- Sab- Jesus yeah. and yeah, yeah, now, yeah. The yeah. second movie is called The Librarian, obviously, Return to King Solomon's Mines. Mm-hmm. I don't need to tell you what that one's about because the title tells you. However, now, written by Marco Schnabel, I think it is, and it was based Snable. on the characters by uh, created by David Titcher. Now, directed by Jonathan Frakes. Now, Jonathan does this movie and the next movie. He 
is the guy who played number one in Star Trek The Next Generation. <whistles> yeah, how about that? Now, the producers, and um, I think pretty much the same for this movie and next movie, apart from one of them, uh, Dean Devlin and Noah Weil, okay, because he liked it so much he came on board. A guy, Michael Murphy, now he's only the direct uh, producer of this one, mm. uh, Kerry Park and Mark Roskin. Mm. Uh, now, in this movie, um, Nicole No One, or C Nicole Noon, is replaced by yeah. Gabriel Anwar, who plays Emily Davenport. Uh, and the third movie, we have got uh, The Librarian, The Curse of the Judas Chalice. Um, same writer, same director, and the producers apart from that other guy I just mentioned. Uh, now, cast. We've still got Noah uh, playing Flynn. Now, Bruce Davison plays Professor Laszlo, stroke Vlad. You know, Vlad Tepes? You know? Don't tell him get delivered oh, all the way. Oh, no. George. And a lady... She's a beautiful lady called uh, uh, Stana, S-T-A-N-A, Katik. She plays Moon Renoir. She plays a very interesting part in this movie. Don't say I it. will not say what it is, but she's very attractive and very um, essential to the plot. How's that? Yeah, only th um, in all f three movies, they all have the same supporting character. Ca Co-stars in it. Yeah, the main the main ones don't change. Just some of the other ones float in and out. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to start giving them the overview? We yeah, want to tell each story well. in its entirety. We're yeah. going to give you a sampling, yeah. so you can go and and look yeah. for yourself. Yeah. So the first yeah. um, a librarian um movie begins with, well, it starts with the um quest for the the spear, and so it starts off with uh, our our student. Um, what's his name? Flynn, who's just a student, and he's got like twenty um, diplomas yeah, and and degrees. Tw twenty two degrees from uh, all yeah diplomas from diplomas university. Diplomas and degrees. He's he yeah, a professional yeah. student, and he prefers to stay in university and do whatever. But um, his teacher tells him, um, "We don't want you here anymore. We want you to get go you go and join the real world. Join the real world. <laughs> Use your knowledge and join." Us in the 21st century or 20... Something like that. Or whatever. Yeah, he, he's trying to bugger off. And yeah, it doesn't yeah. help that his mother is pushing him to get married. So, you know, to every single girl, she, her she, her mother, that his mother's best friends with. Well, you got to be fair. He's in his early 30s. Well, he said to be in his early 30s. Yeah. And he's still living at home with mum. Uh-huh. He's either got to be a complete nerd... Which he might be, <laughs> or just totally stupid. I think he's, I think he's a nerd. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, his mother tries to set him up with women that she thinks would be a good match for him, which I doubt because she has terrible taste. Mm. <laughs> as, as mothers do, you know. Yeah, but she does have. Apart from the, those bad quirks to her personality, she knows how to give him good advice, you yeah. know, when he needs it. Yeah, sometimes it's quite funny. It's just really, really appropriate because in the first movie, she's talking about, about um, passion and things he wants. Not It can't be just in your head. It has to be in your heart as well. Mm. Anyway, yes. he receives an invite to go to uh, the yeah. library. Yeah, a job offer. A job offer. And mm. he goes there. There are a lot of applications. App Kent's applying, and all some of those people got a rejection because they were not good enough. Gosh knows why, but maybe it was just something they said, <laughs> or something they didn't say. Mm. Yeah, that's it. So it's his turn, and he feels like he should back down because he didn't feel he doesn't feel confident for this role because mm. all the um, other applicants mm. got rejected and feel a little mm. let down they didn't get the role. Exactly. So anyway, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. So he goes in, and it's he's being interviewed by that. Uh, uh, Charlene. Charlene character. She's cute. And of. she's nice, but she's really <coughs> garuff, as I said. Very efficient. Yeah, very efficient and, and official. Yes, mm. and of course, um, she asks him, "What makes you experience? You want this role?" And he's umming and ahhing, and he gets um, up there yeah. and he makes a bold statement. He says exactly the same yeah. line his mother gives him, and this kind of pleases her. Um, Joan, what's his name? Um, jo 
Jonah Judson. 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 Yes. Judson, who is a, who's sort of a proprietor? You know, a bit like, we're not quite sure what he is. He hangs around the museum, well, not the library all the time. A bit like a proprietor. He looks after it for the librarian. Yeah, just so you guys know, this is the library is like the the Metro Library you've probably heard of in New York. But it's bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> And it gets bigger as it requires space. A little bit like Harry Potter's room for requirement. Yeah. Instead of you and need it. Mm. It takes place in underground. It's like looking at something out of um when they get into the L there, it makes me think of Men in Black and Yeah, are going down, 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 down. Yeah. And they soon go to appear in this library. It's behind a secret book bookcase, like you know, like yeah. like you see in those mo- those mysterious movies. But the thing is, it's 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 not just books, it's magical things, it's mm. um, things the world should know about sort of things, you know, th- things that are secreted away, yeah. but mainly supernatural yeah. stuff, isn't A it? lot of yeah. supernatural mm. stuff is in, in these ones, and you won't believe most of the stuff they have, most of them reference to other movies, like, um, for instance, as an example for my research... Um, one of the artifacts was um, the time machine from the 1960s version of the time machine. And that was the one with Rod Taylor in it, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Rod, yeah. So that was in the corner, over, or not, not in the foyer type area. And you also had the Ark of the Covenant. You know, remember uh, our little friend um, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones and the Ark of the Covenant? Mm. Well, that was there. It was nice and neat and tidy. It wasn't hidden away in Area 51 or whatever. <laughs> um and there was um what Excalibur the real one yeah uh, inside its stone no less or yeah, whatever things like that. and uh, yeah and it, it's before you ask it's a uh, it comes to life sometimes yeah and it, yeah it, it got a mind of its own just like what's my hair mm-hmm. oh no well I haven't got any hair left anyway yeah. anyway um, um so anyway um so they they give him a trial you know either you're good enough then you get the job and you get like, so they sent him out on a quest. Yes, at first, but first they um, something gets stolen from the library, and they have to go get it back. It was part of a spear. Yeah, um, mm. as we said, spear of destiny. Now that spear was supposed to be the spear which uh, pierced Christ's side was on the cross, and it was so powerful, mystic- mystically speaking, mm. they broke it into yeah. three pieces. And yeah, this is one of the pieces. Yeah, it sort of has the power over life and death. Uh. And whoever gets the whole three pieces and reassembles it can rule the world. Mm. Gee, you've heard this one before, and haven't we, folks? <laughs> the, the um, the the good guys—they are aware that it they been it's been taken by this a snake cult, a cult that deals with hunting down artifacts in order to bring back magic to the real world. Yeah, yeah. And then a lot of mention about ley lines and everything else and yada 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 and yeah. Blah blah blah, all the usual stuff thrown in. I mean, it's good. It's good fun. I mean, they they thought of that quite nicely. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, so dear old um, Flynn goes on an airplane to to find where the um the next pieces of the spear is, so that they can collect them and assemble them and try to get them away from the bad guys. Exactly. Yes. Anyway, so so he's not alone. We, as we said, he's yeah. with Nicole. No. Well, it's noon or no one. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know whether it's supposed to be no one. Yeah. It's, just, I, it's quite nice, actually. Yeah, I think it was, <laughs> was a, a, a kind of a joke because the um, uh, prior, the owner of the library says, trust no one. Yes, yeah, yeah that's why I say, can we noon <laughs> or no one? Trust no one. Her name is Noon or no one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sort of a practical joke. Yes, I we'll think. get more on that later. He, yes. They, that uh, Bob Newhart is funny in this role as well, even though it's not a, a comedy. He yeah. got comedy bits in it. Yeah, mm. another thing I should mention about Flynn, he's sort of a cross between Indiana Jones and Sherlock Holmes and James Bond. Yeah, he's a, he's a mixture. A mixture of um, different characters. He is, he's quite funny. Actually, he's a good character. I Although like Although he, he does show a bit of... Um, He's like a decipher, like Sherlock Holmes. He's very, he's all detailed, like all in his mind. Oh yeah, well he's he's books like a computer almost. Yeah, yeah. he's bank, he's from book, not book. Yeah, his brain is and like. And just a like computer. Sherlock Holmes, who just <laughs> stares at one person and knows exactly what you had. For yeah, breakfast. he does. He does a couple of tricks like that during the show. He's a, 
Your songs are yada 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 yada. And they go, oh, how do you know that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyway, moving on. So they go to the Amazon. They kind of have to uh, parachute in there because they were going to get attacked by some bad guys on the plane. And yeah, somehow wonderful. they fi- they found out during the, in the Amazon that the old librarian who was killed by the snake guys became one of the the bad uh, guys. Now, well, 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 we'll explain it. Flynn was there to take over from the previous guy who got killed. The girl who's protecting this um, Nicole Noon or no one was in charge of keep, protecting him, keeping him alive. So, and she had affections for this guy, and she was very upset because she let him die, supposedly. But no, he just turned. He wanted all the power for himself. Yes. Yeah. And Naughty. for the in the Snake Brotherhood, <sighs> whatever creeps. Well, I think he started the Snake Brotherhood, maybe, because he, he seemed like a leader. It seems that it was probably going on a lot longer than... Uh, it seems to imply that it's been an well, ongoing been around for a long time, cult. Yeah. Just like... Um, like li- the Illuminati the li- and, and, yeah, and that like sort of stuff. Yeah, just like the librarian was a bit of a long-going tradition. Yeah, well, yeah, of I think that, go back to it's Egypt times, over 3,000 years or more, yeah, Alexandria maybe, you know, all good groovy stuff, yeah. Yeah, anyway... Um, it, so as I was saying, um, Flynn's given a book, a special book, where he has to learn the language of the birds, and this is a way for him to tr- translate anything that they need to find about where the spears are. And considering, and, cons- had- and considering that this other librarian guy doesn't know a thing about it. Um, he has to rely on Flynn to get it for him in yeah, the so end. Everyone's sort of falling behind him about him knowing. He's not a very bright librarian, is he? No. no. <laughs> so anyway, <However>. so <coughs> as they got caught up with them, they got the spear and they say, um, if you if you don't translate the stuff, we will kill Nic- Nicole and all that stuff. Yeah. And so um, they go, now they move on from at the Amazon to... Um, what do they what do they call it? Tibet. Yeah, Shangri La, wasn't it? Yeah, Shangri La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the place, guys. It's where the Fountain of the Youth mm. is, supposedly. That one. Yes, the place where. I need that right now. Mm. I think everyone wants 67 that. Sixty-seven next birthday. <laughs> yes. So anyway, they f- go to Shangri La. Um, they find the um last piece, and. Well, luckily for the good guys, they got away with the final piece, and they hang. They both Nicole and Flynn did a. We weren't. I'm not going into details about Mm. that one. So, anyway. Lucky. But unfortunately, while Flynn is asleep, him, Nicole, and the remaining spear disappear. Yeah. Yeah. But she wasn't naughty. Uh huh. (laughs) But they Flynn thinks that she betrayed him. For the baddie guys, but we soon find out that they she isn't going no, to be a she traitor. She was taken hostage, wasn't she, or something? Yes, yeah, she yeah, was taken yeah. hostage, and they're planning on probably killing her after they complete the ritual. And they found out that that where exactly the ritual is taking place. It's taking place right in the university where Flynn left. Yeah, because at the beginning of the movie, they were building a mock pyramid. Uh, like Cheops's pyramid in uh, uh, Cairo, and exactly. uh, it had that nice golden um, cap on top of it, mm. which was not, you know, it was lost years ago uh, or removed. Uh, they're, they're making a, an exact copy of it, yeah. and they needed those, that a pyramid Identical of that pyramid. dimension, well, you know, scale down version, but the same sort of thing, mm. to help. Uh, they complete the ritual. Yeah, it's somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something to intensify the ritual powers or something or other. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, they mm-hmm. come, they go there and Flynn's not alone in the scene. He in, asked, um, he, um, what's his name again? I keep forgetting. Um, Jonas, Jonas again? No, his name's Judson. Judson, sorry, Judson. Not Judson, Judson. Judson, <laughs> um, who's an ex-marine to come and help him fight the bad guys. Ooh, was he an ex-marine? Yes, he said he was an ex-marine. That's what he said. <laughs> I don't think he was. He knew, he knew more. He had an ex-marine he, tattoo. And oh, he did. That's right. He mm. did. That's right. And for those who out there who are ex-marines probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he might have got one put on. 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh, he may have been an ex-Marine in his former well, life. A few thousand years old. I don't think so. so yeah. I don't know that. So anyway, um, so Judson, Flynn, and they then try to face down the bad guys um, while all this is happening. Um, Flynn and the ex-librarian fight it out. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah and, and all the time yeah. he's trying to stab Flynn with the the full completed version of the spear. That would not be good. Yeah, mm-hmm. if, if he stabs him, his soul itself yes. will be sucked inside to into the, the um, guy. to the guy who's possessing the spear. Yeah. yeah re- is it, I mean... Uh, uh, hey, that, it's coronavirus time. Right? It's supposed to keep separate. Keep yeah, separated. Most yeah, 1. likely. 5 meters. So anyway, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so soon enough, um, Flynn gets the upper hand by by telling him, yeah. guess what, you, the, um, you... Since you've been stabbing at different parts of the um, pyramid, it's starting to shift around and break apart. Meaning yeah, and, he, and and Flynn knew that he was he was getting the guy to try to stab him, and he was moving out of the way, and he kept n- nudging the yeah. And the gold big part blocks. to the um, mm. pyramid at the tippy tippy top was going to fall and probably crush dear old the librarian and the spear. And but did. fortunately, the spear jumps out in time. And Flynn grabs it. Yeah, and yeah, and that guy was squ- squashed like a bug on a windscreen, guys, flat as a pancake. Pancake. And, and soon no, enough, yes. Flynn gives it to the um, underground museum, and everyone is happy. And Flynn is given a full time job at this library, and he's very happy about it. Next. And I then we see good. much sick three months later. Um, his mother is trying to pair him up with some girls who at a coffee shop. Yeah. And but dear old Flynn says, "Don't worry about me. I'll I'll be sure to find someone." And no, look who comes um on a motorcycle. Vroom, 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 vroom. His protector. His protector uh, and new love interest Nicole. And they're on their next ju- adventure. I think I think Mum was rather imple- rather pleased with that. I think she was surprised. <laughs> I thought he was gay. No, well, no okay. sorry, sorry for all you gay listeners. <laughs> But yeah, but it's, you, you think if he's that age and he's, uh, and he's no girlfriends and yeah, and yeah, you think he's either got to be a nerd or gay or uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the one you don't like anybody? Um, 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 antisocial. Antisocial, yeah. So you don't know, but yeah, he's obviously likes ladies. Yeah. Anyway, he well, he likes ladies, but he doesn't like the ones his mother selects. Yeah, that's understandable. Well, so his, his mother's been a bit top. Um, so, yeah, you know, you know, all those uh, TV shows, the parodies, you know, the you know, old comedies and stuff, where they got the Jewish mothers trying to set their son or daughter up with, oh, he's a, he's a very nice boy, he's a doctor or a lawyer, you know, and that sort of mentality. As you know, she keeps trying to set him up with somebody because he can't be happy unless he gets married. <laughs> oh, he can't be, can't be fulfilled unless he's married. Well, there's a lot of unmarried people that are fulfilled. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I feel like fulfilled sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, exactly. anyway, anyway, moving on to the, the next, second story. The se- second installment of the yeah. franchise. And the next story, um, dear old um, Flynn is back. He's collecting the crystal skull from um, some a group of of. of Thingy bang we bandits or something. Naughty guys. Naughty guys, <clears throat> and. He gets uh, sidetracked during his latest adventure. Which is returned to King Solomon's Mines. Yes. Mm. Anyway, his um, teacher and guardian tells him, um, try to um, focus a little bit on the mission and try to let go of the things that, are, that you think are important yeah. for the sake of... Of the humanity. There's no saying, the good of the many outweigh the good of the one. Same sort of thing. Don't, not what you want, it's what has to be done. So the things you want, mm-hmm. hey, look, there's a rare plant over there. Forget the rare plant, you've got a job to be done. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so that sort of thing. he thinks mm-hmm. about this, and his mother, as pr- mm-hmm. the same woman probably mm-hmm. last time. Uh, it's something to carcass. What's yes. her uh, first name? Uh, can't remember. Anyway, yeah. she Been has a... A birthday party for her son, and she's invited probably all her friends, or and even a girl who turns out to be his second, third cousin, <laughs> who he, she thinks will make a good couple with Flynn, which I doubt. <laughs> oh man, her mother, his mother, she's something. <laughs> so Olympia Dukakis, that's supposed to be mother. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, An attractive lady, but uh, yeah, a nice mum. Yeah. So anyway, she's a 
Anyway, after the party and everyone left, Flynn is um, busy looking over some photos of him and his dad. He's reflecting on the fact his dad died when he was very, very little. Yeah. And his mother comforts him, reminds him that of the times that he would write, he would draw sketches of his father's stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, there's something actually involved in this, but yeah. uh, i got a funny feeling. I mean, they keep saying during the shows that, oh, his father was a dressmaker or a dress salesman or something. Mm. He used to go away a lot. Mm. Yeah. Now, I don't know too many dress salesmen go door to door say, hey, lady, uh-huh. you want to buy a dress? You know? uh-huh. Now, um, <laughs> yes. no, but mm. when you think what this guy here is the librarian mm. and he had a special disc, uh, a bit like the Mason symbol. Mm. Now, Dad might have been a Mason or another librarian. Or assistant to the librarian, or something or other, and that's why he kept going away. Mm. So, it doesn't come out, but you start to think, hmm, mm. that would explain a lot. Yes. Yeah, so mm. anyway, um, so so soon enough, um, dear old um, um, Flynn goes to um, I don't know where he goes to, but he goes to um, I think he goes to Casablanca. I think Casablanca Blank was mentioned. Yeah, and yeah. Toby to Ricks. Remember he said Tommy yeah. Diane. <laughs> and he um, goes in, in his search <laughs> to find King Solomon's mine. And he... Um, he does find it. Yeah. I, I thought it was fake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, well. He then gets paired off with Emma... What's her name? Uh, Emily? Yeah. Uh, uh, Emily Davenport. What a lovely name. Yeah, Emily. she's an archaeologist with um, 24... Yeah, she's smart and she's and she's she got this thing about the Queen of Sheba. Yes, yeah. she wants to f- find the Queen of Se- Sheba and prove that she exists. Mm, exactly. Why not? Mm. Everyone needs a hobby. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, she's at a dig and um, Flynn's there, and he tries to pass himself off as a uh, oh, uh, rather come over. Yes, yeah, so something else. And, and but she doesn't the, the, believe him. Nah, he's not very good liar. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> not very good but at all. Later that night, he appears there, and she is five steps behind him by telling him, "You're not he- not the guy that's doing this sort of thing, and you must be a thief or a liar, and and therefore we want I want you out of this dig." Uh. But she he, but she soon changes her mind when she finds that he knows um, a secret entrance to the very the the, the, yeah, yeah, the dig she's on there. She's trying to find things. Thing. And he says, oh, it's probably a secret thing here. There's no secret door here. And he goes, da, 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 da. plonk, there it is. It must be a secret exit. <laughs> yeah, so he's very good that way. He's yes. very analytical. Mm. Yeah, very, um, well, he would make an awesome archaeologist when I look at this. He'd make an excellent Houdini as well, wouldn't he? That too. Uh-huh. So anyway, he goes inside <laughs> this th- thing and he finds um, sort of a, a piece of a puzzle to, oh well, actually a key to the probably the King Solomon's mind thing. A front door key or a back door key? <laughs> Who knows? Know, oh, yes. Yeah. But yeah. along the way, he confronts another guy who turns out to be a Freemason, and their job is to protect King he'd, Solomon's he'd mind. Yeah, to guard it. Yeah. And mm. and luck be told, dear old Flynn's father was a. We believe he was a Mason. A because Freemason he, he, too. He gave Flynn a medallion to wear around his neck. And when this Freemason who was protecting the temple saw it, seen saw it. it he left him alone. Yeah. And, ah, and handy. Just, yeah, just then some bad guys approached them and they're on the quest to find this King Solomon's mine and probably get the special King Solomon book. That sort of... Um, I was waiting for the movie to come out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, see, King Solomon's book in this is a special book where it can, um, <clears throat> it kind of, um, it kind of, um, go, travels back in time. Or uh, no, no, they bring, uh, no, uh, rearrange time or rearrange something. Rearrange time, I mean. A little bit like um, a Necromonicon. It was like a, a spirit type book, you know, spells yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with this book, mm. you can tr- kind of change history. Yeah, you go back and. In, in, and, and undo dead people, with people dying and stuff, and change history and stuff, and <laughs> make it anything you want it to be. That'd mm. be dangerous. Fair. Remember the butterfly effect? Good movie that, eh? Hey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, Flynn mm-hmm. goes mm-hmm. with the um, Emily to try to f- track down the possible King Solomon's mind thing, and eventually they go- they run into the bad guys a couple of times, yes, and he yes. runs into mm-hmm. his 
is Uncle Jerry of sorts. Yes, nice who, guy. He's a nice guy who he thinks is, the, think of him as a father. Or a fa- step- well, yeah, he was his father's best friend, supposedly. Yes. Anyway, they, they travel on a train with him for a bit until they got to their final destination of sorts. And, hmm. and soon enough... Um, he and he said trust no one, didn't he? Yes. Or something like that. Don't trust anybody or... Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Anyway, Flint soon works hmm. out that his little drawings he did for his dad when he was a kid turn out to be... Um, could be maps to... To finding the um yeah clues to the um King Solomon's mine somehow he's been there before and he's he kind of drawn the stuff in his yeah, well, his yeah. book. His dad's told him stories and he got the pictures in his head, which might have been transferred there by his father. Hmm. That's why I think he might have been a librarian or an assistant to a librarian or something or other. Or just or a Freemason who's been who's, he's very clever. His duty is to pass on this knowledge to Possibly. his son. Uh, maybe. Yes. So anyway, they do eventually find the entrance and they finally find the treasure and guess who's followed them? Da da da, da the bad guys. And guess who else? Jerry, the um, family friend who turns out to be a traitor. And the leader. Yes. Who uh-huh. wants nothing more than to go back and change time so he could have Flynn's mother all to himself. Yeah, because he was in love with her, but she fell in love with Flynn's dad mm. instead of him. So yes, yeah. he was in love with um with her uh, too. So well, once Flynn's dad was dead, why did he just move in and say, "I love you. Here's a bunch of flowers. Here's some candy. Let's get married." Maybe she's um conservative. Like she probably doesn't. She's probably faithful to her husband's memory. Who knows? I mean, uh, some people probably may. Um, eventually get uh, get on with their well, lives. Well, that's true and, too, I suppose. And stuff like that. Anyway. But, and not to mention... We're not doing Lonely Hearts Club here. Anyway, here. it turns out that Jerry, he murdered um, Flynn's father. Yeah. He shot him in the... And no one... And I think in the, at the beginning, they said they couldn't find the shooter, so his murder went un, no, un, unsolved. Unsolved. So cold case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> eventually... They, they lock Flynn and Emily inside a sort of silo-type water dome thing. Well, not dome, I mean well, yeah, um, like, silo. Like, 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 yeah, like a big cistern. Yes. Has it. Yeah, so look, yeah. the water starts pouring in. Um, they're going to about to drown. And, the, and I think the roof or the ceiling starts coming down, yeah, which means that they'll probably get having, squished yeah. or... Or shish kebab. <laughs> yes, and, and, and Flynn tries to work out how to get out of there. At one point, he comes close to nearly dying. At one point, but luckily for him, um, his the proprietor was able to get him out yeah, of there. Yeah, Dudson appears in his head and, and tells, tells him, him to, to wake, wake up. up and, and at that point in time, he was being saved by a dark gentleman uh, who they'd saved previously on in the movie, and he, yeah. he, he owed his life to them. So yeah. he'd been I following. Would, them. I would be surprised. Unknown to both <clears throat> Emma and Flynn, that maybe that 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 tribe. He's a tribal man, just so you know. The guy, the Afri- mm. black gentleman, the dark well, gentleman. dark gentleman, yeah. And I can't call him African. I what yeah, he is. I wouldn't yeah, be surprised. Yeah. He's sort of another possible guardian mm. that we don't even really put. Well, we didn't men- touch on it. Never mentioned on it. No, but he's a good guy. Yes, and he's has he wants to. Um, he owes a debt to dear old Flynn and Emma for Emily, sa- yeah, because Emily. they saved his life. He was buried in sand up to his neck. Mm. Yeah, soon enough they um get they kind of get into the another chamber where Jerry is saying the special lines in order to um change history, and so while they're fighting it out, Jerry try I mean Flynn tries to grab the book and stuff. And while he's grabbing it, he's tempted to throw it into the lava. There's lava in this, just so you know. Nice. Yes. But um, Jerry gets into his ear that he can change the past, probably bring his dad back. And then he starts to recite the words. You yes. think he's going to change, I mean, already. But then eventually, um, Emily finally gets him to wake up and realise if he, he he doesn't have to change pa- the past because his dad's right there with him in, in spirit. 
Right. And he wakes up and he throws the book into the lava and Uncle Jerry dives after the book to try save it. And Stupid man, you cannot swim in lava. It don't well, work. actually, I think he gets knocked in there. <laughs> no, he, he, he jumped off the book. Yeah, jumped in. To try grab it. And, and yeah. yeah. A, and refl- a reflex accident, most. Mm. Mm-hmm. So eventually, um, Flynn, Emily, and and their friend, they all get out of the um the um. It's starting to fall the, apart, isn't it? Yeah, the, t- mm, the yeah. tomb. I mean, before it, the um, mine dis dis crushes them. Yeah. Eventually, they arrive at the airport, and he get, hands over the medallion and all the um Freemason duties to his new friend, the um d- the tribal. Um, dark, the African man, I should say. Yeah, we don't know. Was it, was it was Africa? I d- was it? Yeah, it's in Africa. Remember, Ca- um, that's right. Ca- um, the um, and you know, um, Casablanca. Well, that's not. Yeah, yeah sort of. Sorry. Whatever. Yeah, let's say he's an African. Now that'll do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, <laughs> he's about to. So Flynn is about to, um, turn over the duties to, um, him, and because he's already got duties of his own, he's a librarian. You can't have two jobs. You can't be in two places at once, no yes. matter how hard you try. Yes, and anyway, as they, Emma and Flynn are about to head onto their airplanes, she realizes that they will probably go their separate ways now, and Flynn feels a little let down that this is another woman that's going to slip right through his fingers again. Mm. Sad when you think about anyway. it. Anyway. Anyway, um, he finally realizes that he should let go of what's what whatever yeah. because she's got something she's she wants to do she has her, her destiny she has her own duties and she wants to follow the queen of sheba's path and find her she's dedicated to her pursuits yeah so anyway flynn returns to the library and he realizes his he fulfilled his life lesson for today where he has to learn to let go of what is important to him exactly in order to uh-huh. save the world that's right mum. yes mm-hmm. so somehow <laughs> it helped Anyway, anyway, and um, that's the um, second movie. Now the third one starts off that he's having a bit of a meltdown, a very big meltdown. And of course, he's having done. I don't have since I've been here, I've been here for so many years. Yeah. I don't have a social life. I can't listen. Miss Mother's birthday, yada yada, yeah. all of the above. Yeah, and, and not to mention he loses yeah. an um. His third girlfriend in yeah, this Yeah, you know, the girlfriend's walked away. And op- he hasn't been able yeah. to be there for At him, the yeah. opening, he mm. made, was making plans with his girlfriend in England to have Valentine's dinner with her, yeah. but nothing... But he's, but he's doing something at the time. Yes, <laughs> he was going to an auction and getting a special philosopher's stone that turns anything into gold. Yeah, and he, got, he gets it. But the point, the funny part is that... Um, <laughs> After that part, after the officer gets back and he's over his army's bed, they said, you need some time off. They seem, you need a break. Yeah, and why uh-huh. did he, yeah, and he's in his apartment. They, I think they set him up because they end up going to the place they want him to go to. Yeah, see, um, he's <laughs> napping in his apartment and then he has this vivid, very vivid dream of this beautiful, very beautiful good woman. Old lady. Yeah. And mm. she's telling him to come find her, come find her. And then he saw her. the statue of a man on a horse. Hey. And then he, and, and her, that, that, that um, Charlene lady had been in this uh, apartment to saying hello to him with some travel brochures and one of them had a New picture Orleans. of the man on the horse that was New Orleans. And so dear now, old. I went, New Orleans, yes. the place... I'm in Australia, and that's on my bucket list to go to because I want to hear some decent music and eat some Cajun food and have and hopefully be there for Mardi Gras. Yeah. I mean, now you guys do in America, you just get down there and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so he goes down there, and it's probably around the time of Mardi Gras. Whatever, Mardi Gras, yeah. And he's um dressed. Well, really funny. A bit weird. weird at the but, week. yeah. When he gets to the airport, gets off the airplane, he looks really he looks weird. Really weird. Like, he really looks like a librarian. He yeah. looks like a blue suit, white shirt. And he looked really weird. Yeah. But, later that, blend in at but all. later that night, he's dressing more, a bit more. Oh, yeah, no, a white linen suit, open neck shirt. So he looked very nice. Yeah. Candy. Yeah. And then he hears, starts hearing. This beautiful voice. Yes. And he heads down to a nice. Quiet nightclub. Or one of those sleazy nightclub looking places in one of the old buildings. And there's this gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous girl, Ooh. Stana Katic. Hey, Stana, you're beautiful. Yes. Um, yeah. And she's very pretty and she sings like an angel. So, and 
she's sort of like an angel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into that yet. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so um, she kind of t- tries to take him along to uh, another part to the um, to the club where it turns out to be a, a converted church. Yeah. Well, actually, hint, hint. It was an guys. old church, chapel, cathedral, to, which is no longer used and converted into office yeah. space and restaurants and stuff and everything. Yeah. yeah. So in this case, it's a, it's where they light candles and pray for their souls. An altar of sorts. Yeah, they're an altar. It's still, still hidden in there somewhere. Yeah, anyway, she then um, takes out a key from her thigh. Don't what a, j- I'm not joking. And actually, and, 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 and Flynn thought he was, she was getting ready to undress herself and have sex with him. <laughs> uh, not, a, well, not a church buddy. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and she then unlocks a special medallion of sorts with write that has some interesting writing on it. Yeah, and yeah. And yeah. before you get, we get into it, um, some ru- some horrible Russian guys come along, and who have a goal to get this medallion in order to get the ch- um, Judas Iscariot yeah. chalice yeah, that po- can revive. Guess what? Yeah. V- a va- vampires. Now, now I'll explain. The, the the Judas chalice. It's a bit like the Holy Grail, but it's a bit different. Now, the silver chalice, the Judas chalice made of silver, was supposedly made out of the thirty <sighs> silver pieces that Judas had hmm. when he committed suicide by hanging himself on the tree. Yeah, it's supposedly yeah, yeah. made of of. The thirty pieces of silver. Yeah. Yeah. I read. I was yeah. looking mm. it up last night too. After I looked up the Spear of Destiny. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. well, some people think it's real. Others may not think, it think it's Honestly, real. I don't and think it I don't is. think it's real either because mm. I read in the actual Bible that when Judas returned the pieces of silver, yeah. and and these guys went on to using it for what did, did they, they use the, it for? The, I think they bought the Potter's Field with it. Yeah, Potter's Field. From memory, it. I, I have to go back to my bowl. I think they bought the Potter's Field so that they can bury people in there who um, hmm. weren't, weren't consecrated. I can't remember. Now. I can't remember. Now. Again, I have to go check my spiritual stuff. We don't have to go up. into the details yeah. about but that. But yeah, so that so th- th- there's no such thing as Judas Chalice, but it's very nice for the sh- movie. Yes, so mm. anyway, um, so these guys want to get it, and so with quick thinking, um, Flynn um, then directs um, his new lady friend to another to the one side of the um, chapel, and and tells her to sing a high C note, yeah, yeah, no, and, and, and it has an echo, just so you know, and, and, and shattered, shattered all the glass and yes. fell down on these guys, and they ran away while these guys were getting the glass off them. <laughs> and she said, "How did you know I can sing a high C?" Says, "Well, I was listening to you singing before, and blah 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 blah." blah. And he knew that she was classically taught, and yada yada, mm. all this sort of stuff. So yeah. he just rattled off like Sherlock Holmes, didn't he? Of course yeah. he does. Mm. So anyway, um, he and her, her, both they, both of them have a wonderful time in in New Orleans. They they ate some nice hot dogs. They walk a bit, talk a bit, and have a lot of fun. Yeah. And guess what happens at the end of the evening? You know, some hot hot sex comes into it. <laughs> well, you know, and, and actually, um, when you say sex, it, it, it's not sleazy, horrible. You don't see anything. So a lot of it's implied, too. But it's not made to be <laughs> semi-pornography. Oh. Uh, it's, it, it's done tastefully, so you don't see anything. But, yeah, it's implied they're going to get on. Lucky. Yes. <laughs> yes. So anyway, the next morning he finds her gone, and but with uh, the, the, the medallion and a flat the flower there, yeah, and nice. he then goes to and a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he then goes to find out a little bit more about the medallion. Finds out that that about the chalice and the fact that if it ri- revives vampires, at first he's very skeptical and doesn't believe that vampires don't exist. Hello, we've been we've been through this, guys. Vampires may or may not exist in this. In this, in movie, this movie, they exist. Yeah, mm. you think he would get a hint that that if you're working in a library that has Excalibur and, and, uh, and a lot of groovy things like that, possible. anything is possible. Anyway, along the lines, he eventually gets abducted after finding the second piece of the puzzle, and they plan to take those pieces and plan on resurrecting dear old Draki baby so they can get you know take over Russia 
Exactly. Yeah, but first they want to take over America using the old Dracula. Well, were, it was handy. But yeah. they don't realize at the time in this scene that Dracula is his own person. He's not a slave. Yeah, oh. and that's quite funny too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They got some old archaeological guy who helped them out. Yeah. No, the, the naughty guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're dragging him around from point to point or whatever, and mm-hmm. and he's helping them. Yeah, and he's got yeah. good knowledge on his head about yeah. vampires and gosh knows and what. And Flynn knows him. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he knows of of him. He knows of him, yeah. He says, oh, you're so-and-so, you're Professor so-and-so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good knowledge and stuff. Yeah, what a smart fellow. Mm-hmm. But, but we we find out more of it later. Anyway, on. they give him a, give Flynn a drug, a hallucin drug, drug before they could. A hallucinogenic drug, yeah. Yeah, in hopes of dumping his body in the ocean and heading on their merry way. And they think, <laughs> oh, well, he he, he had dr- drug induced stupor and he drowned accidentally. So yeah, yeah but fortunately, dear old Flynn, he unties himself using his. What does he say? He says that. I also read Houdini books. Yeah, yeah, Houdini wrote books too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so he got out of his shackles and everything. Yes. Uh, Eventually, he runs funny. through the uh, Mardi Gras streets. He's still groggy, and, and everyone thinks he's drunk. And everyone thinks he's drunk or loopy, or stoned, or whatever. And yeah. eventually, he runs into um, his lady friend, and she fights the bad guys off for her. She's really fast, yeah. surprisingly fast. And when he mm. sees that she gets shot. He starts, he, crying, he starts crying, and then she revives, and he then looks over and says, oh, "She's alive!" But he, thanks to the drug, and he's probably a little bit surprised, he passes out. I don't know if that if both of that might no, be. No, I think that, yeah, I think a part of it. And he, and, and he says, "But you were dead." And she, she said, "I am." Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out, when he revives, he's at her place, and it's a very vintage type. Place, like medieval... Oh, well, not medieval, just old world. About old so world all the furniture is about three or four hundred years old. And the paintings For too. For good reason. Yes, turns out she's a vampire. And she's about four hundred years old. <laughs> yeah. A bit of shock for dear old Flynn being now... De- he he's, he's going after an old, older girl. Yeah, and mm. as it turns out, he th- first thinks that she was he drank she drank his blood, but he's, as it turns out, she's she looking for holes. She's, mm. she's on a diet. Of and no, it's not. She opened the fridge door and said, I don't do that. And it's all little, little, little plastic bags full of blood. Yeah, too. and who knows where she got those. Oh, blood, blood banks made of straw, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, she tells him a, a brief history about how she was bitten... In the 16 or 1500s. Oh, yeah, we're back, we're back, way back then. Yeah, and and how she was going to get married and she was an opera singer. Yeah. And so her, her big knowledge of music and stuff like that. And the vampire that killed her, you know, turned her and she wants revenge on that very vampire who turned her. And so she couldn't find him, so she determined to stay around. And try to um, keep the chalice um, safe. safe. Yeah, so he couldn't get it. Yes. And she's been guarding it and guarding it. And now it's all coming to fruition. Aha. Yes, aha. So anyway, thanks to the fruition. <laughs> so they, anyway, <laughs> they now they have this... They're, they're going to go and get check out the chalice. And they find it's going to be in a sort of pirate boat that's... Oh, yeah, that was... Uh, whose pirate boat was it? Um, uh, John Lafitte, was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think it was John Lafitte yeah. parked his boat in the swamp somewhere, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. dear old um, um, our lady vampire is aware of... Yeah, of she, she knew it. John Lafitte. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. In and so intimately, we intimately, believe. We he, he said, oh, don't get jealous. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a thousand well, years, technically. He's been around, you know. yeah. yeah. So anyway, a friend of his um, drives them... Uh, not drives them, I mean... He lends him the, his, his boat, boat. to he... get to this very spot. Well, he takes and, him, doesn't he? Yeah. And, of course, um, dear old Flynn and the vampire lady, they head into the, um, what do they call it, in the boat? What do you mean, the swamp? What? No, no inside, in the, oh, inside. Oh, inside, inside the cabin. Yeah, 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 inside the cabin. Yeah. They, had, they, had, they had all the windows with uh, blanketed up or plastic yeah. on it so the sun wouldn't get in because it's yeah. not so It was getting close to sunrise. She can't go out in the sun, you say, yeah. obviously. Because it was getting close mm. to sunrise and she needs to be in out of the sunlight. Yeah, sun, me, just like me, I'm, I'm a bit of an albino uh, sometimes. Of course, yeah, I burn pretty quick. Of yeah. course, the man doesn't really take it that way. He thinks that... They think he's going to have sex for the next couple of hours. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. However, they might have. They might have. They might have. Might yeah. have. 
Anyway, did so, it before. Yeah. yeah, so they arrive at the um, site. They pa- they take a, a sort of small canoe through the swamp area. Yeah, well, the big boat couldn't get in there. No, it was no. too shallow. It's yeah. too dangerous. So they take a small boat and they slowly go through it and they find the ship. They find the Donald Feet ship, yeah. And they c- climb through it and they find the chest and they opened it and there is the silver Judas Iscariot is it, chap- is chalice. chalice. And straight away, the bad guys walk through. Oh, yeah. come, on. come on. Yes. How did they find him so quickly? Um, hello. Remember in the scene, one of the scenes, <laughs> he kind of translated what was on the medallion in front of dear old the professor there. <laughs> Hence, he may have told them that in order to get them to the place. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. as dedicated in trying to get it too. Yes, for other so, reasons. Uh-huh. Anyway, anyway, so eventually they get the, ch- the chalice and they lock them inside the um the rickety old boat. Of course, um, dear old vampire lady, she can't pry open the door. Of course, she hadn't, she's hadn't eaten for about twenty four hours. That's she's yeah. losing her strength. So, dear uh, old, I feel the same way after twenty four hours not eating. So, dear yeah. old Flynn comes up with his old, his mind boggling plan. And there's where MacGyver comes in. No. Yes, <laughs> he takes a special cannon. He kind of blocks up the um that you know the front part to the the um cannon, and light lights it, and the cannon shoots in the up, opposite direction right into the door and knocks the door off its hinges. What and a wonderful, what a wonderful trick! And he yells, no, God um, would be pleased. And then he um yells. Well done, uh, awesome. Well, well he just said something about Isaac Newton. Oh, Isaac Newton, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well done, Theory Isaac Newton. Theory of relativity. No, I can't remember. What, or whatever. What, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very amusing. Anyway, they yeah. they end up heading back to the boat, and they find their guide knocked down. And before we can say anything, the vampire lady jumps onto the boat and takes and the takes boat. the boat. And dear old. And she says that she must get to the chalice before... Before, before the naughty guys do. But unfortunately, Flynn doesn't think it that way. He thinks another She's betrayal. She's another traitor. Oh, yeah. Lord. Yeah. Not all women are traitors. Some are, but not all. No. Uh, uh-huh. So anyway, him and his guide, they have to w- probably walk back or st- or, st- or hitch, which I, which happens. You get They hitch onto another, b- another car of sorts, and they drive... Um, back to New Orleans. Yeah, they get a, they hitch a ride. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, they get back there. Yes, they get back there, and now Flynn works out that they're going to be back in the cabin that they're the the hideout cabin hideout, and so he gets heads down there, and he bumps into dear old vampire lady who he tries to give her a bit of a boo, but he, she just takes it the wrong way. And so, and so he thinks he's being attacked, so she hits him. Um, yeah, well, well you, you don't walk up behind somebody who's, th- who's sneaking up on somebody else and say boo, do you? No. no. Yeah. But eventually the bad guys appear and like clockwork, they plan on using Flynn's blood to fill the chalice in order to revive the Yeah, vampire. well, they, they, need, they, they needed some blood. Now, it can't be virgin blood because it's not a virgin, um, but they needed someone's blood. It so doesn't really cut, matter. Yeah, they cut it and they added to the chalice for some other yeah. stuff there and started bubbling. Oh, it's working. Yeah. Uh-huh. In this mov- movie, unlike the other movies that say you, it needs to be virgin blood, it, in this one, it doesn't really matter. I mean, unless he's innocent. Which I, no, he's not innocent, obviously. That doesn't make sense. Well, he's no pure of heart. Has that? I think pure of heart. Pure but, of heart. But I don't think that, that really matters too much. Well, any, I, know, blood, I think blood, any blood yeah. is would do. So they want to think, they want to um, get Flynn killed off in a heartbeat. So they want. To well, I borrowed some of his blood, not too yeah, much, just a little. And bit. think, yeah. dear old Dracula baby wants a sample of his midnight snack. And they poured it over. The skeleton. The skeleton of Drac baby. But. And it just lays happens. there, not a sausage. But as the professor grabs the goblet, he slowly begins to drink from it, and the Russians feel like they're being backstabbed, but then they find out the dear old um, the professor. professor is none other <laughs> than Vlad, Vlad the, the Impaler, the uh-huh. Dracula, of yeah. the king of vampires, or whatever. Yeah, so the book's so. Yeah, yes, yeah. anyway, he um, reveals himself as Dracula, and dear old 
lady vampire finds out, she realizes that he's the guy who, who turned, turned her, her years ago. Mm, yeah, and that's quite funny though. He um, what does somebody else um, he said what well, I was going really good there, and during, was it during the plague or something? Yeah, around he was all good for a time, but then he, one day he he bit, drank some bad blood yeah, and made mill and didn't yeah. get better. Yes, <laughs> so. and that and throughout this. Yeah. Movie, uh, he kind of been beat by eating some of the um members of the Russian guys, and he now he's got a whole crew of vampires on his side. Yeah, he has actually. It's handy. Made his own little team up, you know. Yeah. Now Good it's bonding too. You know. Yeah. Now it's up to um the remaining <laughs> Russian guys and the vampire lady and Flynn to fight their way out, if they, like, as best they can. And. Yes. So anyway, um, Flynn f- tries to chase after the. Vlad, and of course, um, he he doesn't. Vlad gets the upper hand because he's much more stronger and much more faster. Well, he is. Yeah, yes. He's a vampire. Anyway, he he yeah. has him by the throat, and he's planning to probably bite him or kill him, or both. Well, he might. Well, you might need a drink. You know. Yeah. 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 True. Mm. You you can't live alone without another person to hang out with. Well, some food's nice. Yeah, so you anyway... You can't send that for McDonald's, can he? No, no. But eventually, the lady vampire appears, and they have a fight. And while this is happening, Flynn finds the special uh, special tree. Oh, yeah, some sort of ash, um, ash tree. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the one that supposedly Judas Iscariot hung himself on, and that is the true wood that will kill a vampire. Yeah, mm. so he, t- he cuts it off, and he grabs some, um, the chalice and hides the stick behind his back. I'm not joking. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, he does. He hides a stick behind his back. I'm just kidding, joking. Anyway, um, while this is while the fighting is happening, he calls Dracula, speaking a Romanian voice, saying, "I got the chalice and I had control of you." And and, and Vlad says, "Oh, but you're you're full oh, of pish you're full, posh. You're full of crap." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he comes over and he grabs the um his his wrist and says, "Um, wrong move." But then Flynn says wrong hand and then he stakes out his stake and stabs and, and, and him stake through the guts yeah well through his heart whatever and yeah. Dracula mm. remarks you should be a historian <laughs> and then he slowly decays in this scene I would have probably would have said in this scene it would have been funny and, and interesting that if Flynn says no I'm not a historian I'm a I'm librarian a I can uh, uh. Kind of a sort of an interesting bit of dialogue. It would have been night, a, a night to coin a phrase a bit better. That's okay. It doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. So, dear old Dracula is a nothing but a puddle of dust. Poof. Poof. Yes. Sleep up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Lady Vampire is but happy that she finally got her revenge. She, well, she got her revenge, and that she didn't want to be a vampire. She's a nice lady. Yeah, she had a dream of marrying someone nice, a nice teacher, nice teacher, professor. And but that life was taken away from her. Exactly. Anyway, she um, she wants to end it all now in this final scene. Yeah. Well, no, it didn't. It didn't. Flynn offer say, "Why don't you bite me and I can be a vampire too?" Mm. He d- she she does open her mouth and it looks and, like she's about to bite, she but kissed she him kisses on him neck. on the neck, yeah. meaning she's reconciled with her past and yeah. she re- she wants to go on and. To pass on to uh, oh, yeah. wherever, she, wherever she's going to go to. Yeah, yeah, so she asks um, Flynn to sit with her to watch the sunrise. Oh, that's so sad. And Flynn is a little sad that she's going to go and decay, d- die that a way. Puff of dust. Actually, it reminds me of that movie Vamps with mm. um, what's, my, what's my hood that's in it. Yeah. And right there, that lady hadn't seen a sunrise for about four or five hundred yeah, years. And, and she stood there and watched it. And then she just dissolved... Yeah, in the dust and stuff. Yeah. It's sad. I got a admit, nice vampire it's dying. This this death is a lot more peaceful. It's there's no pain, I don't think. Sit then. No. And she wasn't crying going she, Arg. No, she no. slowly um slowly disappeared and all that remains is her ring that she w- was her yeah, supposedly had, her wedding ring. Yeah, and that didn't dissolve with her because that was a soul, that was a material thing. Yeah. And what else? Uh, was there something else? And he slowly hears uh, the um, yeah. uh, her mus- her voice in That's the wind. That's right, yeah. Like, remembering her f- her song that she sang. Yeah, something like And he softly cries, like he's a little sad that she's gone and everything. Well, he was a bit old for him. 
Yeah. <laughs> Soon enough, fun. he returns back to the library and he gives um, a medallion to his... Um, what's her name? Charlene. Charlene. And says that um, he's found... He's, There's a present for you. Yes, he gives it to her and oh. saying that... that that it, it's saying that he's finally finally going to take on the responsibility of being the librarian again. Yeah. Meaning he was going to think about quitting, but he's finally reconciled that he's going to continue his destiny. Whose destiny? Is he lost? <laughs> no. Anyway, he goes to his um other bo- his other boss, what's his name? Judson. Judson, and he um finally gives him the chalice and he's he even tries to get him to admit that he was the the founder, the founder of the of library. The library. That make, you're actually two or three thousand years old. This is mm. oh really, do But we think he is because he's he, he pops out of nowhere like yeah. a little puff of dust. Or yeah, something. he's like Merlin or yeah, or, I think or a something ghost. about him. Just yeah, or a ghost or. But an I doubt he's a ghost or, because yeah. ghosts can't really um yeah. um well, you know. An, I, I reckon he's an immortal. I think he's and immortal he's, too. And he's about two or three thousand years old. Yeah, maybe. given the responsibility to look after the the library for all eternity. Yeah, and to look after the librarians. Or to be their guide, yeah. tutor, mentor, something yeah. or other. And yeah. what to the last the scene, if they give us a bit of a uh, sort of a men in black scene, sort of where we, as we, the um, camera zooms out, yeah, and yeah. we see the whole area of the library and it's be turns out to be the, sh- the shape the of, tree of the, life. the tree of life. You see, I think Loch Ness monster down the bottom there, and something else. Every, all this mystical stuff around the world is. <sighs> Right there. In, in there, yeah. And we fade out uh, and the credits roll. And as we said earlier, they made a TV series of this. A couple of years later, And they, actually, they also um, made a few books of this too. Yeah. Now, the, the third movie was made in 2008, but the TV series was made in 2014. So it was six years later. But it might have mm. been six, a few years in the developing stages as well. Yeah, just might be. Yeah. And it's a bit of a shame that, that, mm. that it's... I'm I'm not sure if they're going to do a season, um, no, five later on. I don't think they are. No, I think what they got, what they got. Hmm. I mean, it's a shame that this one d- was overlooked for some time. I think that when I think about it, <coughs> that it was a TV th- movie. Yeah, I just mean yeah. that mm. that maybe it was overlooked because um, a lot of other things have got have got more media attention. Yeah, but these are th- these aren't. TV movies and TV shows that mm. no one knows they exist apart from the humble few who might have. Oh, I'll have a look at that. Mm. Um, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I just mean that. Doesn't have the exposure as a commercial movie or something. Yeah, yet. no, I just mm. meant that, like, like the for instance the um the um the uh, the franchise um librarian movies they they didn't get noticed in. I think it's because other mo- other you know. T- TV movies or TV shows have been more noticed, like the like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Smallville, might, and might, yeah, it might have had more better marketing or something. And, yeah. and Supernatural, if all those ones probably got yeah. more media yeah. hype than this one. Yeah, and the same can be said for this um, the Librarians TV series. The um, uh, Lucifer got more media attention whenever I think about because that. Because the, the, the appeal to a lot more people, maybe. Mm. Now, what I was going to say, uh, before, this is all dragging on a bit here at the moment, so I want to say a couple of words. Now, these three movies, mm-hmm. and now, uh, sorry, they, they, were, did, they didn't show up as popular, yeah, because they weren't known as well, but they were. In, in the main, positive, positively received uh, through the critics, uh, the Rotten Tomatoes, the Metacrit- Media Critic and whatever, um, those sorts of things, It's it was well received mm. by the people who saw it. Now, what inspires me to talk about this movie is the special effects involved. Mm. I mean, I love it when they do special effects properly. A bit of CGI here, a bit of something there, and the prop master must be really proud of what he or she's done, mm. um, because yeah, uh, it it felt so good. I mean, the acting wasn't bad; it was mm. good, you know. Yeah, um, mm. it was believable. It felt yeah. like it was out of life. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. there's a lot of references to yeah. Indiana Jones <coughs> in this one. Yeah. I won't tell mm-hmm. you what scenes mm. I'm I'm going to refer to. There were a few scenes yeah. in this that got me thinking of. Of all the um, f- three other Indiana Jones movies, for certain gosh knows reasons. Mm. I won't tell you what scenes, but 
they're pretty interesting yeah. worth watching. Yeah, but anyway, Noah Whale, I think he was ideally set. He reminded me a bit of that, what's that uh, guy who plays um, Sherlock Holmes' TV series? Uh, uh, come back, what's his name? Um, mm. They come back, I can't remember, Christian? Hmm. I can't remember. They, they come back, guy who plays Sherlock Holmes in uh, the Sherlock Holmes TV series. Now, he's a similar personality, that, a bit vague and knows a lot. Mm. And he, he's a similar sort of character. Not 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 as bad as Cumberbatch plays Sherlock Holmes because he, Sherlock Holmes is really weird. Mm. Um, Should we um, um, review this? Because I think we've been going on I for know, quite a I while. I know what we've been doing. That's mm. why I said I want to finish up in a couple of things. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, yeah, there's, um, Noah plays a really good lead, uh, holds it well. Uh, when you get guys like Charlene Judson... I'd say a bit more for comedy relief mm. and whatever to make it interesting. Yeah. Um, and I do think the yeah. TV series, it's more of a... Um, more, if you it's, it's a different sort of thing. It's a it's, different sort of thing because... It's a bit softer. It's more softer mm, and it's yeah. more like um, a police show than supernatural a... Supernatural police show. A supernatural police mm, yeah. show more than a, um archaeologist running around the world trying to find these art- artefacts. It's well, something along those lines, yeah. Um, how would, you know, I've got something written down here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got notes here. Just give, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. It's been explained here. Um, it's based on, obviously, the t- the movies, but mm. the TV series, um, it says, offers a family-friendly, fun uh, mixture with silliness and adventure. So it's a little bit different to the movies who are not necessarily um, uh, family-friendly sort of stuff. There have been, even though there weren't nasty mm. horror mm. and blood, too much blood in it, no. it was a bit softer. So it, 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 the kiddies can watch a bit. So, yeah. Uh, um, mm. So, But I think for, but we haven't watched the whole series yet. We've watched uh, a few of them. And, look, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, I say the movies are better. Yeah. And the TV series, I mean, you can't have it on full action like the movies on every episode, obviously. Yeah. It just ain't going to happen. Mm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it, it's, 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 a different, it's, a, it's a different incarnation. It's its own, it's its own thing. So, mm. I'll say the three movies, definitely pluses. Nick, can you buy those? I have to download them or, um, or on yeah, Amazon? Yeah, you can, you can buy them if you want to. On Amazon? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, yeah. And um, I reckon the three movies, I would actually get the three movies and watch them in order. However, they are standalone movies, but it's good to know the history of The Librarian, which is in the first movie. Well, there movie. was a bit of a continuation. With yeah, they the... are a continuation, but each story is self-contained. But knowing his history as The Librarian, how he became The Librarian, is mm-hmm. good to know by watching the first movie. So... Oh, what's the first, sec- the first, second, and third movie in that order would be the best way to do it. Although throughout the M series, he's he's, a, he's still a very big nerd. Oh, nerd. he's always a nerd. He's a, he, but he's a he's a lovable nerd. He's not like Mr. Bean or something. Sorry, Mr. Bean. So I'm Rowan. Um, but yeah, he's not really, really over the top. Really, really nerdy. But he's 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 enough of a nerd. The sort of guy you used to get to school with or university. He, he always yeah. He just. He stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah, he just didn't fit. Square peg, round hole. One of those guys. Mm. But he's a really nice guy. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to rate this nine... Oh, nine and a half. How's that? I'm going to rate this um, probably... Um, I, think, I think nine and a half, too. Nine and a half, too. Hey, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Mm. Uh, yeah, we don't often go... Uh, I don't often go over nine. I've done a couple of tens recently... But nine and a half is good. Nine and a half is my best. Yeah, that would be yeah. my best too. Yeah, Although so. there are some things I, I do question. Um, this, well, I don't question like um, like most people would question, but I do think that it's pretty interesting all the same. Yeah, I, look, I, I think it's good. I, I think, that, like like I said, I get, I'm more interested in the special effects and the the props and that mm. sort of stuff. And this the acting's not bad. Don't get me wrong, but I mean that. But in this these three movies, mm. uh, yeah, I like I like adventure stuff. I like supernatural stuff when you fuse them together. It's like Laura Croft Tomb Raider sort of stuff. It's mm. sort of like oh, we will throw something in there. You get that, but you got the little bit of supernatural stuff thrown in on top of it. It's yeah. great. It's fun. Yeah. So I um guys, if you haven't seen it, I I definitely advise. Definitely go see it. 
Exactly. It, it'll surprise you, and you'll be surprised on how many references you may find in this movie. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. I like to the, the you, you like the props and the CGI and all the other special effects and stuff. It's great. It's fun. Yes. And that's what a movie should be: fun, <laughs> enjoyable, intriguing, whatever. All these good things that make the magic happen. Yeah. Anyway, I'm finished. Are you finished? Yes, I am. You're sign off? Yes. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, guys. This is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael Stevenson. Saying, see you guys around. Bye, guys. Bye.